Someone was asking about these little power supply modules being sold on eBay. They're basically little switchboard power supplies that convert from mains to low voltage. You get them various ratings like 5 volt, 1 amp, 12 volt, 1 amp. And this one uh, came from a supplier called Yanan, Y-N-A-A-N. And this is the 12 volt, 1 amp one. I just thought it'd be a good one to check. So uh, here it is. And I've already tested it open circuit and here it is driving slightly more than 1 amp. I thought I'd just give it a little push extra. And at the slightly higher than 1 amp, the voltage we're getting is... just short of 11.9 volts with a slight overload. So that's not too bad actually. Now, when you take a look at this power supply, the quality doesn't seem that bad actually. I'm just going to short out that big, fat, juicy electrolytic capacitor before I end up having a horrible experience. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, taking a look at this, uh, in fact, I'll just desolder those wires at the moment. It's got the mains coming in, it's got a NDC inrush limiting component. It's actually quite a neat little module, I have to say. And it's got a, a fuse, which is good, one of the little non-replaceable fuses. Well, I say it's non-replaceable, you and me could replace it. Uh, it's got a common mode interference suppressor, bridge rectifier in the back, and it's quite good because to get the extra spacing with this, as much space as possible, they've put it on... Uh, pads that are basically it's sitting, the pads that, I, that it's on are, are, it's basically just on the corners of them to give maximum separation. It all looks pretty sensible. There is a very odd little chip in here called a 63G20 and then underneath it says 018. I could not find that. 63G20. Actually to be exact it says 63G20 and then it's got a lowercase a. Tiny little six pin chip. Guessing it's a little switch mode driver. Not 100% sure. The uh, topology follows this sort of typical flybacky type driver. It's got the uh, two bindings. Uh, one of them is doing partly feedback and partly power for the actual controller. There's a little MOSFET down there. Here's a little smoothing capacitor for the, um, which I'm guessing is for the power supply for the chip. It comes through a little diode. So that probably is providing the power supply for the chip. Um, it's got uh, optoisolator feedback. It's got a Good spacing and a long anti tracking slot, almost a slight weakness in a way sense because it, it is, you know, it gets, it really is continuous all the way across, but that's a good thing. It's got a little Y1 um, suppression capacitor, the one that's designed to uh, provide an easy path back for capacity of the coupled high frequency, high voltage noise from the primary to the secondary. So it's got a little suppression capacitor. There's the opto isolator. It's got a little surface mount component here. I'll try and remember what that is. It's a 431, which is the typical voltage reference chip that uh, has its, value, its voltage programmed with a couple of resistors, and it's driving the opto isolator. So uh, on the output, it's got the, a big, fat, beefy diode, very generous diode. Uh, the first layer of smoothing is this electrolytic capacitor, then there's a choke within heat shrink sleeving, and then the second capacitor. It just looks quite a good power supply. So uh, before we go any further, let's check it for electrical separation with a high voltage test, I think. Cue the high voltage tester. A little installation tester designed to test at about 500 volts. So let's uh, try it uh, with both polarities and see if we get anything on 500 volts. The other way to do this is to actually take your transformer off and start unwinding it. I'm not sure if I'll do that. I'm quite taken by this little power supply because it does look quite good. So let's uh, common these together. Is that going to come together? It's very dinky little wires. I may just actually crop them, strip them. Strip them with my Unior strippers. And I'm going to be testing it at 500 volts, which is a typical insulation test between input and output. 
those are still just a little bit smallish for that test, so let's see just how it fares. It's set, 500 volt test. This is one of these LCD displays that they've put text right at the very top where you just can't read it, which is a bit annoying, so uh, let's test it. It's tested as fully isolated. Let's swap the polarity and uh, check it again. And do I push it to a thousand volts? I'm quite tempted to push this to a thousand volts and see. It's passed again, so let's step the voltage up to a thousand. Passed again, swap the polarity. The question is, after I've tested at 1000 volts, will it blow up when I plug it in again? It's cleared tests at 500, 1000 volts. That's pretty good. Right, uh, so what if I just tack it onto the LED again and we'll power it up and see what happens. Now I've given it a good electrical surprise. I should hope it would have survived that. Solder. LED. So I'll just flow some fresh solder onto here. And here. I'm still kind of tempted. I mean, I, you know, they're readily available online. I think maybe I should be taking the transformer off this one. So let's get this polarity around the right way and uh, tack these on. And we'll give it a test again, see if it blows up. Part of me likes things blowing up. Part of me says, I'm actually quite taken by this power supply. Wish I knew what that little chip was. I just couldn't find anything on it at all. The, certainly the transistor has uh, is marked a uh, gate drain source. So I'm guessing it's probably a MOSFET then. We delay, lights up. So I um, survives 1000 volt test, but you know what? I think I'm going to remove that transformer and we shall unwind the transformer and see what the quality of construction is like. I always have this thing with these power supplies that uh, I'm not 100% confident in trusting my life to a, a layer of lacquer on these little transformers. So let's uh, desolder that. I should uh, bridge out that fat capacitor because it really is. It, it's Incidentally, it's a 22 megafarad 400 volt capacitor, so it's, go, it's going to be full of surprises. And the capacitors and the output are both the same. They're 470 megafarad 25 volts. So it's, it's not bad. Let's uh, desolder this, shall we? I may even crack out the desoldering pump for this to get it started, although having said that, this is a double-sided board and the transformer is a big boxy component, so... I may actually, this could take a wee while, so I'm just going to pause momentarily. Well, that didn't come out without a struggle, it didn't even come out intact. I had to even bring in the big boys, the desoldering pump with the vacuum pump in it. Right, let's get that out of the way. And we'll see what this transformer looks like. Yeah, that was very tricky to desolder. I think uh, it didn't help the fact it's got really quite big holes. It makes it easy to align and solder in the first place, but the desoldering pump was just getting too much air through the uh, large holes. But anyway, the transformer's out. Let's uh, take a closer look. Sadly, I broke two pins off in the process. That's just one of these things that happens. It means it's a one-way trip, but then having said that, me rewind, unwinding this is a, is a one-way trip anyway. Could rewind it, but yeah. If I was desperate, I'd rewind it. They're cheap enough. Uh, if I like it, I'll just buy some more because uh, so far, quite impressed. But the question is, am I going to be impressed with the construction in here? I think those cores might have to be broken apart because I can see little traces of what could be glue. I'm not 100% sure. Let's apply some gentle pressure. And uh, they're going to have to be broken apart. This is definitely a one-way trip. Okay.
Yeah, it's quite well uh, stuck together indeed. They appear to have actually put some sort of adhesive maybe down there as well, or lacquer. It's uh, Maybe even it's just flux has made it stick, but that's well and truly, yeah, that's there, uh, just crumbling. Right here, well, let's take a wee look at the windings, shall we? So there might be the feedback winding the outside, or the little auxiliary power for the... So, okay. We do have... The feedback winding the outside, which is kind of to provide power to the um, drive circuitry. It's been kept clear of where the cables are coming in from the secondary. So let's remove that winding. see what the secondary looks like. The important bit, the bit that saves you and me from making contact, the mains through a power supply. So the obligatory couple of layers of tape. Now is this going to be a split primary with the secondary sandwiched in between? Not I'm not sure. I'm looking for the end of the tape. I'm not seeing the end of the tape. Where is the end of the tape? It's hiding. Oh, it's been wound on so tightly that it's just kind of the end has just disappeared in amongst the other bits. That is quite uh, elusive, that end. I'm not finding the end at all here. Very much not, the end is nigh. Oh, I'm going to have to give in here. I'm going to have to uh, just burst this tape because I just can't see the end of it. Which isn't terribly productive because I make a mess of that. It is the fine wound uh, sort of like multi layer primer underneath it. It's going to make it just that little bit harder to uh, unwind it if it's all smashed up. Oh, the rain absolutely smashing down outside. Stormy. Then again, as I say, I'm on an island, so um, that's what happens. It can be quite blustery and stormy around here. All right, okay, it's the secondary. It's looking very thick wire. This tape is so tight. This looks like quite heavily insulated secondary wire. But uh, I'll find out when I take it out. Oops, there, that's very heavy. That looks pretty much double insulated wire, and although it doesn't go right up hard against the primary either, this is a good result, is it not? I'm impressed so far. Yeah, this is really thick. Is this just... It looks so much thicker than just, you know, as if it's... um. It's not just fairly heavy lacquered wire. It looks as though it's got a fairly decent layer of insulation on in it. Yeah. Microscope. Oh, that is thick insulation. That's not just the usual sort of little thin layer of lacquer. That is really quite a heavy layer of insulation in that. 
So that, uh, in fact, just out of interest, uh, can I actually, if I strip that, can I get my micrometer onto it? Hold on. This may not have really a super resolution for something like this, but it's worth a go. Zero. So the outer, the inner, is 0.35 millimeter, and the outer, that's, yeah, that is significant. That is really thick insulation in that. That's impressive. So, um, these little power supply modules. Oh, here's another thing. This uh, is the typical little plastic printed circuit board spacer and it fits through these holes. They're four millimeter, so that's also good it's for mounting it. I have to say that between the proper suppression and fusing and the clearances on the circuit board and the definitely the high voltage separation and the, the winding of the transformer, this, oh, and the filtering and the output and the generous diode, this looks like a decent power supply. This actually does look like a sort of UK grade power supply. It, you know, I would happily use these. So um, I think it's time to order some more. So yeah, that's, that's a nice one.